Welcome to an introduction to Business Model Canvas presented by Control Shift. In this interim report on the Stride project, we decided to use the Business Model Canvas to illustrate and demonstrate business models around each of the four demonstrator apps. In order to help everyone understand this, we decided to include in the interactive magazine a short guide to how the Business Model Canvas works. In front of you now is a diagrammatic form of the business model canvas. It has been growing in popularity as a way to produce a business model since the production of the book Business Model Generation by Alex Osterwalder and Eve Pinier. You can Google business model generation or look the book up on Amazon. Business model canvas is a diagrammatic form that allows you to design, challenge, innovate and describe business models for business startups. So now I want to take you through each of the sections of the Business Model Canvas and make some comments. The first part of Business Model Canvas that's usually looked at is the value propositions. This is the bundles of value or services that create value to customers. For example, if this was a Business Model Canvas for Sky, then in this column I'd have the family pack, the movie subscriptions and the sports subscriptions indicating things that are valuable to some of my customers. This brings me on to customer segments. The customer segment section is where you describe all of the people, organisations or groups that you want to create value for and generate revenue from. This segment could be used for other products as well and even free customers if a premium model is used to help promote your product or services. You need to be able to link the customer segments to the value propositions, indicating which value propositions you expect to be able to sell to which customer segments. The link between customer segments and value propositions is by the channels that you use to sell your products. The channels describe which touch points you want to interact with for your customers to have a value and can point to make sure that you use these channels to make a clear path to customers. Channels usually include things like shops you use or web systems that you sell on eBay or buy on App Store. The final box in this section is customer relationships. This answers the question, what kind of relationships are you trying to establish with your customers? Do you want them to be emotionally loyal to you, proud to wear your product, a fan of your football team? Having described the customer segments and the value propositions, you would then typically go on to describe the revenue streams you expect to generate from those customer segments using those value propositions. These revenue streams can be in several forms. The easiest form is just an indication of what the revenue streams are. But as your business model gets more detailed and more towards real life, they start to include numbers of what you expect to make from each of those revenue streams. So having a look at that right hand side, we've seen the value and the customer segments and the revenue stream. Now you can look at what's going to help you create this business. So let's move to the left hand side and start with the key resources. Key resources are the people you need, including people and systems, and which assets you feel are indispensable to your core business model. For example, if you're an app developer, you might think the one key resource is your own skill, but you would need also to write all the devices you need to test on, for example, development systems. This is not every resource, just the critical resources that are critical to the success of your business model and production of your value propositions to your customer segments. Following that, we list the key activities. These are the activities you need to be able to perform well in order to sell your propositions. For example, if you're an app developer, that's how well you code and how well you can market your app. Moving on, key partners. You can't do it all yourself, so in this section, you would normally describe what partners or suppliers you need. Again, your key partners in order to succeed. Once you have all of these things on your left and right, you can then understand the cost structure of how you would generate the costs that are needed to create the value propositions and the customer segments. And, of course, in the end, your costs need to be lower than your revenue streams. It's important that you can then map the relationship between all of these elements of the business model canvas and then have them interact with each other. And this mapping of relationships is actually the key to this being successful. 
So that's what a final business model canvas should look like. And I'd finally like to present an example of one that's gone right through this process. A business model canvas like this will be used to demonstrate the business model for each of the Stride apps. I hope you enjoyed this introductory guide to business model canvas and you find what you need to look at the rest of the interactive report.